Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Roth Jaw. Today, we'll be drawing landscapes. I love drawing landscapes probably just as much as characters, and so I've compiled a list of essential key tips on how to make your landscape perfect. And this month is Nemaverse month. I'm revamping my entire Patreon for the year, focusing on world building, portfolio building, and it's gonna center around my upcoming book, Nema. I'm giving you guys a free mystery pin, one of these four characters from the book. Without further ado, let's do it. Top five tips for creating landscapes. So this is the piece that I've decided to work on with you guys today. In my previous episode, I revealed Lyris, the Dragon's Whisper. Lyris is from the cloud world. I thought we could make a really cool landscape with clouds, floating crescents, beautiful scenery and birds. So tip number one is the rule of thirds. This is so important. You can break up everything into the rule of thirds, cars. Characters, this tablet, these programs, this keyboard, you can break down any painting into a rule of thirds. This is great for beginners and great for anyone trying to check their composition. I put this crescent right here on this focal point. And it's always more interesting to use two thirds of the composition and then leave the other third for something else. Yeah, so where do we put our third crescent? Since we're dominating down here, let's put a smaller crescent up here on this focal point. There you go, let's check out our grid. Now this one looks important, it has character, and it repeats the crescent shape one, two, three. Which leads to my second lesson of the rule of thirds. How do I add objects in an organic way? Maybe if you wanna add birds, poles, flowers. So what I learned is, if you wanna add things organically, you put two close together and one far apart. For example, if I wanna add birds, these two are gonna be close together and there's one far apart. If you put three next to each other, that looks a little mechanical, you know? So for my crescents, these two are close together, one far apart. So next time when you're trying to design a landscape or even take a picture, think about the rule of thirds. The second essential tip on creating landscapes is the color story. The story of your color is so important because it evokes the mood you want your audience to feel. So I'm just gonna show you what color can do. Ooh, nice. So blues are meant for trust. We look out at a nice sunny sky. We trust the sky. If it's red, ooh. Now it's a different mood. Passion, it's more power, it's like, Ah! Green is also calming, you know? Green represents nature. Good practice for your color story is to always have warms versus cools. Like maybe it's uh, warm up up here and it's cooler down here. Ooh. Oh. The sun is really warm and the shadows are cool, but if we reverse that, and now we gravitate our eyes to this spot. Maybe there's like a campfire. Maybe there's like a single street light. I am going to try to challenge myself. I'm gonna sandwich the warmth. Maybe there's like a field of flowers on these crescents. All the colors are in here. So we can take this shade and kind of carve out this rock. Use the colors that I made and add structure to my subjects. The third essential tip on landscapes is shape contrast. We like mixing texture. Maybe it's an outfit, you know, what kind of hat goes with what kind of dress. Do you wear hats with dresses? But you get what I mean. Like what jewelry goes with your dress? For example, in my piece, my crescents and heart structure has more of a swooping motion. And then my clouds, more organic, looser structure has a more linear characteristic. And then within the shape itself, you can add even more characteristics. I'm gonna break this shape two shapes, so it's like, it's like a broken rock. I'm gonna break this part as well. Something I learned with shapes is that your brain is really smart, obviously, but your brain can connect the dots wherever it goes. Even though these are broken, we read it as one continuous structure. Some real life examples of this tip, you know when you see a sunset and water, those are two different characteristics. We get the beautiful sunset and we get the, the water waves. Like if you just have just the sky, that's beautiful, that's cool. But if you add a plane through it, it juxtaposes each other and it creates more character. My fourth essential tip 
is scale. Scale is so important when creating environments because it can literally make or break your piece. Right now, let's add Lyris. I'm thinking she is around this tall. Ooh, that's kind of nice. And I, I kind of put her in the center. It makes her feel like she's the one. She's in control. This is her destiny. And this is very popular with movie game posters, Halo, you know, e even Pokemon. Let's change the scale. Oh my gosh. You know, everything is less important. We're in the middle and it feels a little weird. But let's make her really small. Ooh. And so now the world is our oyster. There's a whole land of opportunity. I kind of like this scale right here. She's big enough where she feels important and she's small enough where the environment feels massive and epic. And there's one more tip, but before we get to it, I want to refine and work on this painting a little bit. And so I'll check back soon. Hey guys, welcome back, and here's the progress. Just needed to tune in and try to figure it out, and I think it's looking pretty good. I'm trying to give more character to these crescent. I added beautiful flowers, and this leads me to my fifth and final essential tip for landscapes, atmospheric perspective. This can make your piece more immersive and believable. If I want to add more atmospheric perspective and push this further back, so I would use the sky color, kind of push it back. Maybe we can push, uh, this one a little bit. You see that? I'm adding more atmospheric perspective, which correlates to my bonus tip, color dodge. How do you expect me to make a landscape video without adding some color dodge or some god rays? I'm not gonna let you guys down. I feel like this piece can use some of that beautiful sun energy, that blast of color dodge. And so, here we go. Yeah, I just needed a little bit of that mother nature, that life, just breathing into us. This is before and after. Ah, before and after. We just gravitate towards that warmth, that color dodge, that god ray. So to recap our essential tips, we have rule of thirds, color story, shape contrast, scale, atmospheric perspective, and color dodge. I feel like those tips are essential for starting and refining your landscape skills. So I'm gonna work on this thing and I'll check back in with the final. Hey guys, welcome back and I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope it gave you some insightful tips on how to make your environments and landscapes stronger. If you want the full demo and check out everything in depth, please visit my Patreon where I'm having a Nemoverse update. I just wanna help you guys build your own portfolio and create your own world. This video's question is, what elemental environment would you live in? Maybe you wanna be on like a floating beach, a fiery volcano. Maybe you're too hot, you wanna to go to the Arctic, some icy caves. For me, 2020 has been such a stimulating year, so I want to kind of be in the clouds, maybe a few of the flowers with Milo, and just relax. <sighs> yeah, let me know in the comments below, and we'll choose a lucky subscriber. My debut book, Nima, comes out in June. Pre-order is in May. I am beyond excited for it. Don't forget to subscribe. Remember, every day is a color dodge day.